the story begins at the Rubetto family estate, where a young lady dressed in black is shouting at someone, Art! You're late, don't you think? Just how long does it take you to slay a dragon? She yelled from her chair. A young man with black hair and extremely tired eyes tells her that he was sorry Lady Wendy while his body shivers. Wendy then pouts and tells Art that she wanted to eat the dragon but her appetite was gone. What's the matter Wendy? Said a voice. It belonged to the Rubito's family patriarch Lates, who was axing Wendy what is it, Wendy then tells him to listen. She tells her father that Art had once again failed in his duties. Art continues to shiver and shake while kneeling. But Lates calls his name causing him to flinch. He looks at Art with disgust in his face calling him a useless imbecile. And that he had entrusted Art with the role of butler to his beloved daughter. But had completely failed to meet his expectations. Art was shocked to hear these words and began to thinking that he was no good after all. And that his life had no meaning whatsoever, as he couldn't even live up to his master's expectations. Art sees that the two of them were still busy talking but his vision begins to blur. As they called out to him, Art tells Wendy to leave it to him. But he soon collapses onto the ground. A flashback is seen from the past, Art was taken into the Robdu family as a baby. He was trained to serve as a family butler. Long ago he and Wendy got along well but things eventually changed, Wendy had soon developed a strong temper. Additionally she demanded more and more, from housework to slaying beasts, in the end Art had developed magic to serve her. Day after day Art had done so many tasks just to meet her demand. Eventually Art stopped thinking and began to move autonomously. A cat is seen on Late's lap as he speaks out about the fact that Art had collapsed from exhaustion. He tells Art that they could easily replace him and that he should get out of his sight as Art was now a useless crap. Art is then seen locked outside the family's gates, with his eyes still tired, he bows his head towards them. Art begins to walk through the snowy forest with his exhausted soul, he thinks about what he should do now. He doesn't see a rock and trips over it falling flat on the ground. He begins to form tears in his eyes as he felt worthless after being fired. His bottle of water leaks out as he lays on the ground in the forest till night time. Snow began to fall from the heavens, which slowly covers Art as he continues to lay on the ground without moving. He thinks about the fact that he only wanted Wendy to smile. Just as a wolf approaches growling, a fierce-looking wolf slowly walks towards Art, its eyes focused on his body as he remained on the ground. It soon lunges towards him with its sharp fangs. But Art had manages to block the wolf's attack with his blade, sending it flying towards a tree. Art looks at it with lifeless eyes. He then begins to walk towards it. Slowly raising his sword into the air, he tells the wolf that he was sorry. But a small yap-yap sound is heard catching his attention. It was revealed to have come from a bunch of baby wolves that were shivering and growling at Art. He sees that the parent wolf began to stood up, and he watched them slowly disappear from his sight into the snowy forest. Art then looks at his sword in his hand. He squeezes his sword arm thinking how close he was in becoming a monster. He then spots the bottle he dropped and sighs deeply at the loss of his water. He then decides to head west where he could join the guild to make some money. Art had decided to sleep within a tree to hide from the cold weather. Through his journey to the west, Art had various encounters ranging from being friends with a squirrel who helped him check if a mushroom was poisonous, facing off against a wild boar, and cooking the boar as a meal at night, and soon they finally parted ways with each other. Art had finally reached the city of Firen, as he walked through the crowds of the city, his dark aura surrounding his body caused others to be alerted to his presence. He soon reaches the Guild of Firen where there were various people inside. Art was looking at the mission board, wondering what was the most fitting job would be for someone who was raised as a butler. With his tired eyes he spots many extermination requests. He then grabs onto a mission letter which was a laundry request for the Isfil family which was perfect. He quickly rushes to the counter and tells the lady that he would be the one to take the Isfield family laundry request. The lady was shocked to hear this and so were the other members of the guild. They tell him that countless people had tried that quest already and that Art was being an idiot for taking it and that he should give it up. Just as the lady at the counter was telling Art that the quest was not just any laundry request, but that nobody had succeeded in it till now.
but. Something interrupts their talk as they both look behind. Art turns and sees a beautiful lady covered in blood which made time feel like had stopped for the both of them. Art looks nervously at the lady covered in blood. The guild members talked amongst themselves saying that it was Isfil the Ice Princess, and that she was both a novel and an adventurer. She sends a glare to the members which forced them to turn and walk away from her, but Art was blushing as he stares at her. She then throws the sack onto the counter saying that she had brought the quest items which were several boars, the lady at the counter thanks her for the hard work. She then informs the Ice Princess that somebody had accepted her quest to do her family's chores. She wondered where the person who accepted the quest was as she looks around. The lady at the counter tells her that Art was behind her. Art and Irk both stared at one another in silence. Irk then breaks the silence by introducing herself as the eldest daughter of the Isfil family, Isfil Irk. She then asks Art who he was. She tells him to spit it out which he nervously agreed to. He kneels onto the ground and bows his head, telling her that he his name was Art and that he will do his best to service his master with all his dedication. The introduction left Irk to be stunned upon hearing it. Art then realizes that they had spouted a line that he had used as a butler. But Irk looked at him with an intense glare. She then tells him that monster blood doesn't wash out easily, and that it takes an entire day to clean one piece of clothing, with all that info did he still want to give it a try she asks. Art then looks up at her telling her that he still wanted to do it. Irk then asks how long would he need. He tells her that he just needs an hour which shocks her. Irk looks at him curiously and then tells him to come with her. The Isfil family estate has a beautiful mansion and fountain are seen with flowers and butterflies everywhere. Irk and Art are seen walking through the estate. They soon reached a gate where Irk tells Art that she needed to go change and wanted him to follow Tet the butler to the back garden. Tet tells Irk that the results of her effort are extraordinary was usual. Tet and Art exchanged greets as Tet tells him to follow him for the laundry. On their way there Tet talks about how Irk became an adventurer to prove her worth according the family's traditions, and that the Isfil family was a noble house with the rank of Marquis. Art chuckles nervously upon hearing Irk's backstory. A scene is shown where Irk was bathing and soaping her body in the shower. They soon reached a bucket filled with a gross aura which Art asked Tet if this was all the laundry. Tet explains to him that the blood of monsters permanently ruins clothes after three days, and that cleaning just one of them would be a labor that takes three people an entire day. But Art replies that it was no problem. Irk had arrived wearing a beautiful dress that catches our attention. Irk asks him if there was blood on her face, but Ark replies nervously that there was none. She then giggles and tells him that him was a strange one and good luck with the laundry. Art sees this and blushes while thinking that she was totally different from Wendy. He then removes the cloak he was wearing. He bows his head and tells them to leave it to him. Art begins by grabbing a pail of water and tosses it onto the pile of laundry. The staff were amazed by Art's technique as it was perfect, but wondering if he needed help but he declines. Irk sees him and notices that he had a skill as Art closes his eyes. He then rotates the laundry covered in water. Irk then realizes that he was using magic. She stares in amazement as she had never seen this kind of magic before. Art smiles as his magic was being casted. He had created this type of magic to do all his chores, making it his very own original domestic magic. Called bubbles as multiple bubbles started to float into the air and around the estate. Irk sees the bubbles in the air and smiles calling it beautiful. The laundry was now hung onto the line to dry. The staff gathered around it and commented about how it looked brand new and was spotless. Tet then turns around to ask Art how he did it. Art then explains that he had followed the concept of slimes that could absorb and digest anything they touched, and based on that principle, he had made a digestion spell to replace the digestive fluids with detergent to clean things. The staff was impressed that Art had made use of a monster's behavior and that it was brilliant. Irk then calls out to Art. She apologizes to Art for doubting him which shocks both Tet and Art. She then tells Art that he was amazing for solving a problem so easily as everyone was working hard to the bone over her laundry. But Art was stunned to hear that as he considered it as easy, Irk then tells him that she wanted to ask him something. She asks him if it would be alright to call on him again which caused Art to recall Wendy's strict commands, 
he immediately kneels down in front of Irk and tells her that he was hers to command. Fear and sweat trickle down Art's face as his body trembles while Irk looks at him. She then walks over to him and touches his face, telling him that she didn't know what kind of life he had lived, but that this wasn't an order. She offers her hand to him, telling him that it was a request instead. Art's face shined brightly as he thought of the word request having a nice ring to it. He recalls his past memories of when he was given orders constantly and that he didn't have a choice. As the staff gathered around Art he realized that a request was different, he smiles knowing that he had the right to decide for himself. He smiles happily and tells Irk that if it's her request, just leave it to him, as it was from now that Art had began to live life. Art soon wakes up from the daylight of the morning into the sound of birds chirping. Irk sat beside him and tells him good morning. Art was stunned to see Irk after waking up. He screams in shock and looks around wondering where he was. He thinks deeply about why he was in bed, but could not remember a single thing. He looks around the room once more and sees Irk thinking that he did something he shouldn't have. Art then covers himself with a pillow to hide his embarrassment from Irk as he was in her room. But she asks him what was wrong and if he couldn't remember. As Art was hiding and blushing, Irk explained to him that after doing the laundry yesterday, he had collapsed from doing all the laundry at once. Art hits himself with the pillow thinking about how he had pushed himself too far using magic. Irk leans close to Art asking how he was feeling now. Art lifts the pillow up and tells her that he was much better due to her generosity. But Irk had to make sure and touches his forehead telling him not to lie as he still looked pale. This action caused Art to be knocked out as she tells him that Tet had prepared his reward. Tet brings in a huge chest filled with endless gold. Art was surprised to see the large amount of gold. Irk tells him that the Isfil family could afford this and asked if he had any plans elsewhere. He tells her that he didn't. Irk then snaps her finger calling for Tet. After a while Art was seen wearing a brand new set of clothes. He asks Irk if it was okay for him to wear these as they were very nice. Irk tells him that it was clothing prepared for servants and that she plans to keep Art in her employ. She then tells Art that the clothes looked good on him. Hearing this made Art blush as he bows his head to thank her for allowing him to serve her. But Irk smacks Art causing him to scream in pain. She looks him straight in the face and tells him to cut the formalities as they were the same age. Art smiles happily upon hearing those words from her. The three of them are then seen walking through the corridors to head to breakfast. On their way there, Art whispers to Ted about why Irk was acting so nice. Ted then explains to Art that Irk was the head of the family and was known as the Ice Princess, and if he had heard the rumors from the guild. He then continues to say that there were many nobles who hated commoners which caused Art to recall Wendy's face, and that Irk absolutely hated those kinds of nobles, which also meant that Irk couldn't stand being in the presence of such individuals. Irk was the only noble they knew that shared the same perceptive as commoners. Making her a truly kind person. Art smiles happily hearing about Irk being a nice person as he knew that she had a lovely heart as well. They soon entered the dining room where the house head Ramon Isfiel asked Art if he was the new guest. Art introduces himself to Ramon but he tells him that he already knew the story and shouldn't act so stiff. Irk then calls out to Ramon about the dart circles underneath his eyes and that they were getting worse. She recommended that they go to a doctor. But Raman declines the offer saying he doesn't want to consult a doctor for this because he was just not sleeping properly in the beds of the house. But Irk was concerned as it has been going on for some time now and was afraid of what will happen if it continues. Ramon tells her that it would just be fate's will. Irk shouts at him for saying this but Ramon tells her that he missed the imperial beds. He puts his head onto the table while talking about how the imperial beds were the best as it felt like you were sleeping clouds. Art then tells him that he could make one. Hearing this stuns everyone in the room, but Art continues to tell them that the material would be different from the imperial version but it was still possible. Art looks around at everyone's faces and wonders if he had said something wrong. Tet then tells Art that he was wrong as making one of those beds takes a craftsman with decades of experience to do and that it would take him at least a year to make it. Art then tells them about how his previous lord forced him to make it from a glance, causing everyone to think of Art being a poor thing. Ramon then offers to pay 10,000 gold for one bed which shocks Art. He then tells Art that it will be quite a sight to see him build one and if he had the talent he would be rewarded generously. Irk then requests Art if he could build one for her father. 
Art thinks about how long it had been since anyone had depended on him like this. He agrees to their requests and tell them that he would be grabbing some great blackbird feathers. Irk then tells him that she will come along as it was far too dangerous. In the Dorado forest area, Irk and Art are seen on a tree. Irk asks him if the feathers of the blackbird were extremely hard and dirty, making it hard to be like the imperial beds. She then recalls that the feathers of a great blackbird would make for some of the best adventurers' armor out there. Ark then tells her to relax, as he wanted to show the people that needed him how well he could handle it. Ark agrees reluctantly and mentioned that the blackbird was a B-rank medium-sized monster which would be difficult to defeat. She then tells him that when it comes she will be the one to hunt it down. But Ark tells her that he would do it. He then thinks about how the moment was strange as the blackbird should be roaming around here at this time of the day. A fierce roar was heard in the forest catching Art's attention. Above us! Art shouts as a huge blackbird appears from the sky. It crashes into the tree where they were causing a huge explosion. Irk tells Art to get down as she will be the one to hunt it down as they face off against the great blackbird. She then rushes towards the blackbird shocking Art. She swings her massive sword towards the black bird but it deflects her attack with its black feathers. A chemical was then seen sizzling in the black bird's mouth which Art notices as an acid attack that he couldn't allow Irk to be hit by. He then casts his magic enhancement paralysis on his dagger and throws it towards the black bird. It lands into the black bird's throat making it paralyzed. Seeing that the black bird was paralyzed, Art exhales deeply and took a focused sword stance and soon unsheaths his blade from its cover. With a simple dash and slash Art slices the head off the black bird. Irk was stunned to see this as the black bird's head falls to the ground. She calls out to Art who asks her if she was okay, but Irk asked him what that sword technique was as she couldn't even see the sword hit it. Art says it was no big deal as he just casted his paralysis magic enhancement, Irk was shocked to hear that he could use such magic. She explains to him that there were only a handful of people that could do something like that. But Art tells her that they needed to skin the bird for the feathers. Irk then shows a hesitant face which caused Art to ask her what was wrong. She tells him that it was nothing and took in a big gulp before stabbing the bird with her knife. Blood exploded all over her as Art stood in the back shocked at what he was seeing. He then asks her if this was the reason why she was always covered in blood to which Irk replies that he shouldn't telling anyone about this. Irk was then seen in the showering washing herself with bubbles and soap all over her body. She then looks at the bucket filled with feathers and asks Art if they could really use these hard black filthy feathers for a bed. Art tells her to leave it to him and soon cast it as original magic. Bubbles and feathers soon floated into the air due to Art's magic as everyone stares in amazement. They hold on to the newly washed white feathers as Art explains to them that the black bird's feathers were white and soft but after years of dirt they turn black and hard. Irk praises Art for his incredible knowledge. He then tells them that his previous employer wanted black bird for dinner making him study them a lot. They began to say it was faith and a coincidence that Art showed up like this. Hearing those words make Art blush and he tells them that he could make more. After a while the newly made bed was placed inside Ramon's room. He then leaps onto the bed and bounces. He tears and laughs as he sleeps on the bed. Irk and Tet couldn't believe that they were seeing him laugh that way. Ramon then yells at them to get out of his room to allow him to sleep. After some time, they peek into the room and could see him sleeping soundly. All the staff rush to Art asking if he could make one for them as well. Art agrees and smiles at the thought of making everyone happy like this. He then agrees to make a bed for everyone, causing all of them to celebrate with joy. Tet then asks Art about what he was going to do next and that with his powers, some nobles would want to abuse it. Art thought deeply about his past with Wendy. And tells Tet with a smile on his face that he just wants to see everyone's happy faces. Irk smiles at his answer and tells him that she will be the one to protect his smile. Art blushes at the sight of Irk smiling at him. Tet sees the both of them laughing and smiling. As time passes by Art then tells them that he will be heading back to his room first. But Irk grabs onto his wrist telling him to wait. And asked if he could come to her terrace tonight. Irk is seen standing on the terrace as night falls. Art arrives and sees her face being lighted by the moonlight. He stares at her dazzled by her beauty as she turns to him and says you're here Art, as the moon shined in the starry night. 
Art mentions to her that Ramon was now sleeping soundly to which URL replies that it was thanks to him. He was glad to hear it and soon a silence fell upon them as Art looks at Irk nervously while blushing. They soon caught each other trying to speak at the same time. Irk then decides to go first. She asks Art about where he had exactly come from, which causes Art to think about how he never mentioned it before. Art looks hesitant at answering her question but Irk assures him that regardless of his answer, she will always be on his side. Art smiles and tells her thank you. He then went on to explain to Irk about his past with the Robetto family and serving Wendy as her butler. With a sad look in his eyes, he tells her about how he worked frantically to repay his debt to them, but in the end he had failed to meet their expectations, and that it was all his fault. Irk could only stare at him in silence after hearing him speak, Art then calls out to her to which Irk asks him if that was really what he thinks. She opens her arms and tells Art that she wanted him exactly the way he was. But Art thinks deeply knowing that he would be fine with Irk but was still hesitating. Irk then tells him about how she hated being called the Ice Princess. As memories from ten years ago was shown, Irk explained that her family was always prestigious amongst the nobility even for Marquis, and that she had never given much thought to her family's position, she just wanted to be friends with everyone, or so she thought until one day she spotted the girl she was playing with. The man tells the little girl if she was getting alone well with the Marquis daughter to which the little girl replies that Irk had given her a flower, the man says excellent work as Irk listens onto their conversation. The man continues to tell the little girl that URL was a wonderful tool to use in order to get closer to the royal family and that the little girl should stay close to her. Tears begin to form in Irk's eyes as she listened to the man talk about how their family was only a viscount which was lower nobility and that they needed to do this to rise in society. Back to the present, Irk talks about how nobility of higher ranks hold incredible power, as she grips her hand tightly, she tells Ark that she felt cursed by her position. She then turns to Ark asking him if he hated nobility. Irk looks at him waiting for his reply, but Art tells her that he doesn't which surprises her. He explains to her that being thrown out was incredibly painful, but upon seeing Irk and Ramon he realized that there were kind nobles as well, hearing those words made Irk recall Art saying he just wanted to see everyone's happy faces, that's very like you said Irk, she then tells him that they should head inside as it was getting cold outside, Art agrees straight away. But Irk was angry at the fact that the Rabetto family had taken full advantage of Art's kindness and made sure to remember Rabetto Wendy's name. The next day, wearing her armor, Irk tells Art that she will be going over to the guild today. Art tells her that he will follow, but Irk stretches his face, telling him that he needed to rest as he had worked a lot already. As they waves goodbye to another, Art overhears somebody calling the head maid outside the window. He sees that the maids were having trouble with handling the bugs which were going to eat the vegetables. He calls out to them saying that he had an idea. Soon after the maids were amazed to see that the bugs were running away from the vegetables. Art then explains to them that he had used laundry and bestowal magic to attach Ramon's scent, a combination which drives the bugs away. A voice appears saying how impressive it was for Art to create this using bestowal magic. The voice belonged to a handsome young man who winks at the maids as they called out his name, Lord Fry. The head maid tells Fry that he should have let them know in advance that he was coming back so they could prepare his meals, while the other maids were swooning over and falling in love with Fry. Fry apologies to the maids as they left talking about how cool he was. He soon turns his attention to Art and introduces himself as Isfil Fry Irk's brother. Art then introduces himself to Fry but Fry taps onto his shoulder rapidly, telling him to he hated stiff formalities but what was more important was how cute Irk is. Fry is a siscon ladies and gentlemen. Fry soon asks for a handshake from Art. Art hesitates but still offers his hand. As Fry grips Art's hand he notices something. He smiles and tells Art to duel with him, which causes Art to be confused but he soon realizes that Fry's hand was cold. Fry looks at Art in a serious manner. Aren't you really strong? Fry asks as he holds Art's hand. Art and Fry are seen alone together. Art asks Fry if he really wanted to fight to which Fry replies of course all that traveling is making me rusty. Art then asks why he wanted to fight. Fry then snaps his fingers at Art telling him that he wanted to gain Onyai Chan points while winking. Art then agrees to the fight if it means making Fry stronger. Fry instantly disappears and reappears behind Art telling him here I come. He then unleashes a powerful uppercut of his sword attack to Art. Which Art manages to deflect. 
Frey's powerful attack could be seen from the skies. Amazing! You survived my attack. I knew it! You really are strong! Said Fry as he smiles. R on the other hand was checking the spot Fry hit him on, noting what a terrifying slash and that it was a one move that was equivalent to getting hit by a cannonball. Art then focuses his stance thinking that he needed to start getting serious, Fry sees this and realizes that Art was becoming serious. Fry then takes a step back, and instantly leaps towards Art telling him he was going to speed up. A mad flurry of attacks came from Fry towards Art, but Art manages to deflect and attack according to Fry's attacks. Their attacks seemed to miss each other and made it look like they were on equal footing. But a sweat drop appears on Frey's face as he realized that Art was stronger than he thought, and that not even a single attack landed on him. Fry then unleashes another terrifying blow saying you won't lose. For my honor as the heir of the Isfiel family. As they continued to exchange blows with one another, Fry thinks about how if they show any form of weaknesses the other families could exert political pressure against them, and hence as the first son of the Isfiel family, he needed to be stronger than anyone else in order to protect both his family and people. And in order to protect Irk. Just as Fry was thinking about going all out, he wondered where Art's limits were, but Art calls out to him. He tells Fry not to hold back and to wear him down, Fry hears this and decides that he won't hold back, summoning a huge ice flower in the skies above the two of them. Ramon was in the mansion when a loud noise throws him off guard, he looks out the window and sees the huge ice flower in the fields where Fry and Art were. Ramon wonders if it was Frey's doing and that he had came back unannounced, Fry explains to Art who had been crushed by the frozen flower that he could use bestowal magic with refrigeration to create ice. Ramon thinks about Frey's magic, about how that ice and its temperature in the air was lowered to condense the water vapor into ice which was then formed into a weapon. But cracks soon started to appear in the flower frozen. Art had broken out of it without a single injury. Fry and Ramon were surprised to see that he had smashed the ice magic flower. Fry remarks about how amazing Art was and asked how he did it. Art then tells him that it was nothing special, as he just used his bestowal magic called friction to heat his sword and melt the ice. Ramon analyzes Art's words and noted that since magical ice is strong enough to shatter steel however magical heat counters it, Ramon remarks how very clever. Fry looks at Art in amazement and noted that he sees why Irk took an interest in him. But Art replies nervously at the comet and mentioned that he and Irk had only met recently and thinks only about being useful to Irk. Both of them soon regained their serious game faces. And lunge at one another at great speed. As their blades collide, Fry thinks about being an ultra-cool big brother, while Art thinks about paying back his debt. They stare at one another seriously once again and began their flurry of attacks against each other once more. Fry shouts out that this is interesting very interesting. Art tells Fry that he was quite strong as he had never seen these techniques before. Fry smiles and thinks that Art was still holding back. He then tells Art that he was only at 70% of his power capacity as the sky starts to darken. A huge godly wolf with white eyes soon appear behind Fry as he tells Art that he will get serious. A common serious look was in Frey's eyes as mist appears all around them. He takes a serious fighting stance, recalling that in the distant past during the war between the gods and titans. A titan was known as the Great Wolf amassed fathomless power in a bid to destroy the gods with its prey in its sights. With one decisive blow its jaws rent the earth asunder. And devasted the world. Frey then rushes towards Art with his god wolf as its attack was called Fenrir. Art sees this and begins to stand in his sword stance, it is said that a master is someone who becomes one with their technique, with a single technique in their whole being, they give their all. To courageously strive forward, to transcend the limits of human reason. With a single swing of his blade, Art cuts through everything from Frey's Fenrir attack to even splitting the heavens into two. Art's sword breaks as he points the broken blade into Frey's face. Art was disappointed that his sword had broken and needed to still improve, Art recalls that the technique he used was a technique of the primordial creation which he discovered in the royal capital's archives and had diligently worked on improving it. Frey's face was filled with shock, but his son's chuckles then laughs while slapping his face. He tells Art that he had one and that he was really strong. 
but Art refutes his statements and told Fry that if he didn't use magic he would have lost. Fry calls Art a good guy and thought about how Art had targeted the blade of his sword in order not to hurt him. Tet then arrives onto the scene and calls out to the both of them, he greets Fry about how long it had been and wondered if they were training swords again, as expected of a royal knight Tet added. Art was shocked to hear the words royal knight. Fry then formally introduces himself to Art, he was the first chair of the, the Royal Knights Magic Academy, and the vice captain of the Royal Knights Isfiel Fry. He then links at Art telling him that he was basically the captain already and that he should keep it a secret, as only the king and Isfiel family knew about it. Disgusting! Said a voice as a hand smacks a teacup away, we are now back in the horrible Rube Dew house where a servant is apologizing to Wendy. She bits her nail thinking about where Art was and why her father had thrown him out, her father then appears from behind the door wondering what the matter was. Wendy points at the servant and tells her father Lates to fire him, but Lates tells her that she would have fired the tenth servant so far and wondered if they were all that terrible. But Wendy screams at him telling Lates that they were all awful and how she hated this while wishing that Art was still here. Lates then informs her that there will be no end to the substitutes if they were meant to replace Art but more importantly he informs her that the royal ball was in three days. Hearing this made Wendy happy to know that the royal ball was still taking place. Lates confirms it and thinks about how Wendy should be considering marriage as well as she dances around the room happily. She then opens the wardrobe which reveals a dark dress. She hugs it as it was a wonderful dress that Art had made for her, leaving the rest up to him. Irk is seen sipping tea in a beautiful garden. Just as Fry enters and shouts out loud, saying Irk. My dear beautiful sister. I'm home. But Irk looks at him in disgust. Fry continues to be happy and tears flow from his face as he shouts out Irk, aiming for a hug from her. But she ignores him and greets Art instead, causing Fry to slam into the ground. With blood dripping from his nose, Fry continues to call out to Irk saying her brother was here but Irk continues to ignore him as Art thinks of their relationship as an odd one. Art then asks Irk about her request for today which she informs him that she had gathered medicinal herbs for an orphanage, for I was screaming in joy over hearing his sister's voice in the background. Hearing that she helped an orphanage, Art couldn't help but feel worthless. Irk then reminds him that he had helped them with the laundry and beds, for I was shocked to hear this. Irk then tells Art that they should take it slowly together putting one foot in front of the other. Hearing this angers Fry as he tells Art that they should duel again as he had just heard something that he can't condone as a brother. Hearing the word again catches Irk's attention as she stares with an intense glare. She yells at Fry asking if he was bullying Art, but Fry nervously tells her to stop it as he didn't do it, but an angry aura still arose from Irk as Fry tried to deny her claims. Big brother I hate you! Yelled Irk which broke Fry. He collapses onto the ground saying it was all over and that his world had come to an end, Ramon then enters asking what the ruckus was all about. Fry calls him daddy and tells him that Irk said she hated him, Ramon then tells him to say sorry to which Fry didn't want to do, Ramon then asks why he was home as there must be a reason for it. Fry then tells him that he had a message to deliver, and with a serious look he informs him that it was about that event. Art was curious about what event it was but Ramon deflects the topic and asks what their plans were for the royal ball. Irk looked unhappy as she tells him that she didn't want to go but Ramon reminded her that the duke had requested for her audience. Art thinks about how the royal ball was a gathering where all of nobility get to strengthen their ties. Fry and Tet then declined the invitation to attend the ball as they were busy which shocks Ramon as he was the one asking. The three of them then started thinking about who could attend the in their stead. They needed someone who was reliable had proper etiquette and someone who Merck could rely on. They all gaze at Art causing him to fluster. Irk looks at him and decides that if Art was going she would go. Hearing this made Art blush. Tet then agrees with the decision as Art would be the perfect candidate to be a bodyguard to Irk and a representative for Fry. He then asks Art if he could represent the Isfil family. Art took a moment to think and wondered if he could be useful to Irk. He then bows his head and agrees to take on the duty, making Irk happy as she tells him that she appreciates it. Irk then returns to the mansion as she needed a dress to be made. The head maid appears and informs Irk that she had grown again as she measures Irk's body. She blushes upon hearing those words and tells her not to say it.
The head maid then informs her that since Art had arrived her chest has gotten even bigger, she then advises her that when a woman becomes aware of a man, their body will imitate certain developments, essentially the woman wishes for the man to view her as a woman, hearing this causes Irk to blush heavily as she wondered who she wanted to view her as a woman. But soon Art's face appeared in her mind. She was shocked and wondered why she had imagined his face. The head made giggles and mentioned that they needed to have her bust enlarge. She whispers to Irk and asked if they needed Art's assistance, but Irk brushes her off calling her a fool and that it was not needed, but the head maid teases her saying that they just needed him to adjust her size. The two of them continue to argue about Art. Ramon is then seen asking about that event. Fry informs him about the Eclipse locusts that he had brought up at an inappropriate time. Roman noted that it was taking place this year too and that every few years, they would make an appearance in millions destroying land and villages they sweep across the country. Fry tells him that the locusts had already struck Paul, Ramon notes that he was already informed to which Fry expected as he was more updated than the Lord Chancellor. Roman replies that the Lord of Paul was a friend and asked what he thought of Art. Fry responds that he thinks of Art as a good and honest kid who was a genius that was born only once every thousand years. But Ramon felt bad about Art's past history which was incredibly harsh, for I was glad they found him as the bed he made was dangerously comfortable. Roman then tells Fry to leave the locusts to him and wanted Tet's report on the house of Rub Edo. Tet reported to them that the former staff had told him about a dark rumor, which tells them that the Rub Edo family had access to large sums of money from unauthorized sources which were perhaps illegal businesses or other risky ventures. Roman hears this and thinks deeply hoping that nothing happens. Night arrives and a carriage is seen in the forest. Art and Irk were sitting inside of the carriage, Irk had a sad expression on her face as she looks out the window. She then calls out Art's name. She touches the window and tells him that nobles are troublesome people. Hearing this made Art sad as he looks at her. He then calls out to Irk who asks him what is it. He tells her that she looked beautiful. But URL tells him not to flatter her as the dress didn't fit, but Art tells her that she looks like a goddess. He then takes her hand and kneels before her, telling her that he swears to protect her no matter what may come. Irk and Art stare at each other as Art had decided for himself that he won't be anyone's puppet. And that he was sure it would be fine for now, just as the carriage heads to a castle in the horizon. Irk and Art soon arrive in front of a giant door of a mansion with guards stationed outside. Art looks at Irk who showed an uncomfortable expression on her face. He stares at her deeply before bringing out a perfume bottle to which he casts cleanse and enchant perfume on her, he asks her if that had helped calm her down to which Irk just stares at him. He then bows in front of her asking if she would be so kind as to allow him to escort her, she gives a faint smile and says gladly. They soon enter the mansion with their arms intertwined with one another. The other nobles see Irk walking through and commented that she was as beautiful as an angel, and that Art wasn't too shabby himself. Irk felt embarrassed and thought of somebody who didn't come, but Art tells her not to worry, and informed her that he was here after all, Irk blushes as she hears those words from Art. The musicians in the hall began to play music. Irk and Art soon started to look around and noticed that the people around them were dancing. Art then calls out to Irk offering his hand and asked if he could have the pleasure of dancing with her. The both of them smile at one another before Irk agrees and holds his hand. They held each other close as they danced to the tune of the music. The more they danced together, the more embarrassed and shy they felt towards one another which they noticed, but they soon laugh it off together and continue to happily dance to the music. Just as they were dancing, a lady notices them from afar. A lady rushes into Art's body and hugs him interrupting the dance between him and Irk. Art was surprised by this sudden action, he recognizes her as Her Highness Leah who tells him that they finally got to meet. Irk was stunned to see this as Art asks her to release him from her hug. Leah calls Art a wonderful person which confuses both Art and Irk. She then recites the fact that Art was the one to save her Leah Drab from a dragon's wrath and was her knight in shining armor. She then tells him that she couldn't hold in her eagerness to meet him, Irk then interjects into the conversation. She asks Art why he had never tell her about this, but Art apologizes as he thought it wasn't important, Leah then recommends they go somewhere quieter first. 
Wendy had soon arrived in the hall wearing the black dress that Art made and was carrying a black fan with her father behind her. She walks through the hall as the people around her wonder why it was nosier than usual, and that it was because the princess had made an appearance. But Wendy was focused on what they were thinking about the dress that Art made, and if they couldn't take their eyes off her now. She then talks to her father wondering about which of the nobles had he picked to be her fiancé, Lates then points to a certain individual that was her future husband, but shock was written in her eyes as she sees where he pointed. Lates tells her that her finance was young Mr. Freeman Daigle, who was a large man stuffing his face full of food at a table, with shattered plates around and pieces of food on the ground, Wendy was taken back by the sight of this. She quickly turns to her father asking if he was kidding and that there was no way she could be with such an unsightly pig. But Lates immediately slaps her right in her bitchy face. Lates nervously laughs out loud and apologies to Freeman for the noise, and stated that Wendy was talking about the food, Wendy was in shock as she held the spot where her father had slapped her. She though about how it was the first time he had hit her just as Lates recommend they meet Freeman in the kitchen. Freeman's face was revealed up close with sauces on his face, he calls out to Wendy as his fiancé and tells her to come here, Wendy tears up upon seeing this horrible scene. As her black fan remains on the ground. Back to our favorite group, Irk asks Leah and Art how they were acquainted, Art explains to her that he had some business in the royal capital while Leah commented that he looked so cool when he defeated the dragon. Irk was a bit disappointed to hear this as it made her think that Art was nice to everyone. Leah then asks him if the thing she had sent was useful in his happenings. But Art was confused and asked what the thing she was talking about was. Leah then explained that she had sent a large number of gold bars from the royal treasury that she had permitted him to have, but Art continued to give a blurred look which Leah notices. She then asks if he didn't receive it, to which Art replies that he was sorry as he does not remember such a thing. Leah then changes the topic as she could send something else later and asked why Irk and Art had come to the party together. As they explain their reasoning to her Leah realizes that she had been found out. She thinks about how love is blind but Art doesn't even realize, just as he calls out to her. She grabs onto his arm asking him if he was free after this and if he would like to visit her place, but Irk joins in by grabbing his other arm telling her that Art couldn't go as he was her butler. The two of them argue as others watch while Leah tells Irk that Art would be happier by her side but Irk refuses saying that Art should decide. As they argue a black dress is seen dashing by. Wendy was running away thinking that she refuses to be with a pig-like man and that she would rather die than marry him. But she soon trips on the carpet and falls flat on the ground. She begins to tear up thinking if only Art was here. As she lay on the ground with tears in her eyes. She overhears Irk and Leah arguing with one another, she then spots Art's flustered face between the two girls. Her face was filled with shock and then anger as she calls out Art's name which he hears. There you are! She yelled as she walked towards them. Irk, Leah and Art were all stunned to see Wendy in front of them. Thanks for watching the latest part from the voice of Manwa. Subscribe for more content and don't forget to comment below what you want to see in the future. Like and share for more.